as we saw here with the World Cup. It's rugby league as it's played in Australia, particularly Queensland. And with a typical Aussie understatement, the subject of this item is described as God. He's Wally Lewis, captain of the team, prospective politician and member of the Order of Australia. He plays league smart, hard and at times tough. As the commentators say, boys will be boys. This report from Jeff McMullen of Australia's 60 Minutes. Here's to Wally Lewis for lacing on a boot. Sometimes he plays it rugged, sometimes he plays it cute. Wally Lewis has the sort of talent that football legends are made of. There's blue on all his fingers. He's the emperor of Langley. He can kick. Peter Lewis will take a drop shot for goal. It's high. And it's fair. He scores tries. Still they right away. This is Wally Lewis. He's in. Oh, Lewis is in again. But Wally's greatest gift is his football brain. When he's hot, he can make an opposing team look silly. And Lewis a shot. There's too much attention paid to Wally Lewis here, not enough to miles. I honestly believe that you've got to uh, plan your game before you go out there. And um, a lot of people don't adhere to that thought. They think you, get, you just go out there and it's rough and tumble and you just bash your way wherever you can on the field. But unless you uh, think about it, I don't think you stand much chance at all of winning a game. Single-handedly, Wally Lewis has led Queensland out of the football dark ages. After years of being second best, the Maroons have won their share of the big games against New South Wales. Anybody's ball. Jack jumps for it. It's loose. It's a fire. State of origin matches, they call them. But sometimes they're more like a civil war. Dean Miles is looking to uh, kick with the New South Wales defence warming in. That's already on. Punches being thrown from everybody. To Aussie rule supporters, this is all there is to rugby league. But take a VFL star like Warwick Kappa. How would he go mixing it with the big league? Falling from the sky. I don't think he'd get through the crowd onto the field with those white boots for a start. I think they'd, they'd pelt him with uh, too many cans. Wayne Pearce is the skipper of the New South Wales side. He says Aussie Rules fans are way off mark if they think league is the weaker game. Well, I just challenge them to watch a, a State of Origin match and try to approach the game in an unbiased fashion and uh, then call us cream puffs after watching that game because um, really they are super hard. No matter what sport you follow, you'd have to applaud the State of Origin game when it's played like this. Every time Queensland scores, you can be sure Wally Lewis has had a hand in it. Got everything. Attack, defence. Good when he runs. Good when he runs. Because he's a thinking footballer. Oh, uh, mate, he's a, he's a footballer that thinks. He's probably the best footballer in Australia ever, probably, I reckon. Uh, Top bloke, mate. God. <laughs> Wally Lewis is simply the biggest hero Queensland has ever had. To them, he's King Wally. Feeling's just incredible. In 1984, we had we won, and 36,000 people you now are cheering and chanting for Queensland, and the feeling was incredible. Wally's you know, wife, Jackie, says the they really do treat him like a the king. Night, and they used to bow to him like his God, and they did it again the other night, and the feeling was just, I just felt so proud. <laughs> You've got to admit, there's something wonderfully Australian about crowning a footballer King Wally. He does look a bit like one of those Shakespearean kings, a portly prince of rugby league, playing football like a midsummer night's dream, mocking the referees, fooling his opponents, and always playing to the crowd. Trouble is, in his new biography, King Wally dumps a bucket on some of the biggest names in rugby league. I respect him as a player, but I've lost respect as a, as, a, as a human being or something. I thought, well, you know, how much shit is this guy full of? In Sydney, Ray Price is a football legend. But in his book, Wally says he's got no respect for him. I'm not jealous of the man. I, I think he is a great sportsman. But this pedestal that the media have got him on, he really believes that he is king. 
Price. Back inside for Sterling. Sterling's got support to him. In rugby league, a grudge can lead to war. When Ray Price led the New South Wales attack against Wally and his men, Pricey had a mean look in his eye. As the two clashed, Pricey's shoulder went in, and King Wally didn't get up. Now, Price is up. That's Lewis. Ray Price reckons Wally ought to be an actor's equity. He loves to do things towards the crowd, towards the, uh, the cameras. He is a, a great player. But uh, there again, he is a show pony too. I wish I'd have heard that. So did my solicitors, I guess. But, um, Jesus, there's a pot calling the kettle black. My criticism towards him has always been about the same thing, the pedestal. You know, he's got to remember that the game is the game and it's not Wally Lewis, then the game. It came out in the afternoon paper that he said I was like the weather, soft and cold. And uh, I scored two tries that night, and both of them were through Ray Price tackles. And I got up after the second one, I said, Jesus, that was a soft try, Pricey. And it's getting real cold. The best way to, to get even is not to throw punches. If you have to get even, it's to, to hit hard in the tackle. Wayne Pierce also has a score to settle with Wally. How would you like it if they called you captain of the cockroaches? We refer to, to them as the cane toads. Do we enjoy stomping on them during the game? <laughs> well, that's highly illegal, but uh, we, we certainly enjoy lining them up with, with some good tackles and uh, certainly beating, beating them. That's the best thing. Lewis. There's lots of ways to get even. The Blues' Michael O'Connor also copped a few nasty words in Wally's book, so when they met on the field, they slugged it out. Yes, boys will be boys. I'd heard that, that Mick was considering legal action in the book. And uh, it was me that would put one on Mick's chin before he got, got square. So, I mean, Mick's the, not the sort of bloke that comes around belting blokes. And uh, as I said to him after the game, sorry about that, but I was a little bit upset that he was, uh, he'd taken, um, I suppose, the, the wrong, or he had got the wrong idea in the book. Let's have a look at it. There's the kick. A lot of players say Wally may be king in Queensland, but if he ever comes south to Sydney, he'll be more like Humpty Dumpty. Lewis holding his head after being hit pretty late. Would Queensland's hero survive in Sydney? Ray Price says no. I would have loved for Wally to come down and play in Sydney when I was still playing. I, you know, I kept challenging him and, and writing about him and things like that. But uh, he kept staying up, saying he'd stay up there. Now, I've never, ever said at any stage that he could not play football. All I've ever harped on was, one, his condition's not right, and two, that's why I doubt very much whether he would have made it in Sydney, because Wally's just not the greatest trainer. For once, the old rivals agree. I've got no, uh, no doubt about that, and I've been saying to myself for the last three years, I'm going to get fit this year. Are you lazy? I, I believe I can give the appearance that I'm extremely lazy. Got it. Covering! After years in the game, when most players would be thinking of getting out, Wally Lewis next year will lead a Brisbane side into the Sydney competition. Come on, Nick. Drop ball. It's a bit like the Sydney Swans taking on the VFL. But to make it in the big league, Wally knows it's going to be a struggle. All right, time. Good work. A lot of people say that I've just stayed up here in Mickey Mouse competition for, for a long time. I suppose uh, to a certain extent that's true. But um, I'm going to have to get used to, to trying to produce best form week in, week out, instead of uh, once every three or four weeks, as has been the case here in Brisbane for the last ten years. Wally wouldn't have lasted, even in Brisbane, if he couldn't take the hits. In 1980, he copped an elbow in the throat and almost choked to death. I pushed the larynx into the trachea, which is a windpipe, and, of course, that blocked off the air passage to his lungs. Well, I kept pointing to the throat all the time, and and to my stomach, trying to indicate that I couldn't get any air in. He couldn't comprehend, so in the end, I suppose it looked like I kissed him. I grabbed him by both ears and just pulled him down onto my mouth. And he said, can't you breathe? And I just shook my head. And he blew in, and nothing went in the first time. And about the second breath, I started to get a bit in. And by this time, the doctor arrived, and, uh, and he took over. He sort of grabbed my throat, and it relaxed it a little bit. And uh, threw in about three breaths of air. He might have had real bad breath, but it was the three best breaths of air I've ever had in my life. Wally is just 27. If that's a surprise, listen to the knocks he's had. I've been very lucky, Touchwood. Um, 
in what have I been playing now? About 20 years. I've had a broken jaw. I've dislocated both shoulders, broken one thumb, and had my nose broken about six or seven times, and that's it. Just six or seven times? Yeah, well, that all happened uh, in about 1980, and it happened uh, in the space of, of about uh, six weeks. I broke it five times. He's a bit battered and bruised, but up north, they think Wally is Superman. Just listen to these Brisbane kids. Up here, Wally is a genuine working-class hero. Sport's been a very big part of my life, and it's certainly been uh, a successful thing for me in the way that uh, I wasn't as successful as I would have liked to have been at school, uh, study-wise. King Wally's popularity hasn't escaped the notice of the politicians. All three parties have tried to get him on their team. But for the first time in this interview, Wally said not if, but when he runs for the Queensland Parliament, it'll be as a Labor man. I mean, I've got my set ideas on what I'd like to do when I go in there. Bob Hawke seemed to enjoy being photographed with you. Is that where your political allegiances lie these days? Uh, I like Bob. I think he's a real good bloke. My tendencies lay toward the Labor Party, especially being uh, a rugby league player because you, you come across a working man all the time and they're the bloke that's got to really battle to, uh, um, to get the best for his wife and kids. Right now, while he hasn't got time for politics, he's trying to win the biggest prize in rugby league, the State of Origin Series. New South Wales won the first game 20-16. The battlefield switches now from here in Brisbane down to Sydney. And on Tuesday, all of King Wally's men will be trying to even the series one game apiece before an Armageddon final in July. Now, if I were King Wally, I'd be pulling on a suit of armour because I hear from the New South Wales camp that he's walking into an ambush. Is he going to be a marked man? Is he going to get knocked off? Uh, put it this way, a lot of people would like to uh, get hold of him. The crowd's going to be enormous, and uh, I think King Wally and his men will certainly get a touch at their own back. I really don't hold any grudges against particular players, but then again, I suppose, yeah, if I had the opportunity to, to line him up, I certainly would. Turning the ball back inside. When the two sides look set to draw the first game, the Queenslanders reckon they were dead unlucky when New South Wales scored in the dying minutes. Well, that was McGaw getting his hand to it, I think. This will be a controversial decision and a brave decision by referee Stone. Full time Hooter is sounded. Wally can't face another disaster like this. Losing for Queensland breaks the man's heart. Near to a stage in the game there where. With two minutes to go, you score a try to even the match up. You're on top of the world. You certainly go from the penthouse to the shithouse pretty quick. Even though they lost the battle, what a glorious fight it was. It says a lot about King Wally's spirit, but even in defeat, he sings the praises of the game he loves. It only takes me about five seconds to, to work out that I love the game and it's the greatest game of all. Even today. Even when you lose. And that's it from the close-up team this week.